transient analysis. In brackets to write underdone response. Transient analysis, brackets you write, underdiamond response. Square. This 
is root 1 minus theta square cos omega t plus theta into sin omega t. This whole thing divided by under root 1 minus theta square, which I am writing here. This whole thing divided by under root 1 minus theta square. If you observe, this is of the form of a sin omega t t cos omega t sum of sine wave and cosine wave so we know that sum of sine wave and cosine wave means a sin omega t plus t cos omega t is under root of a square plus b square into sine of omega t plus tan inverse of e by a. So you apply this formula here, root of a square plus b square will become 1. So this response of a second order underground system will become e power minus theta omega in t by under root 1 minus theta square sine of omega dt plus tan inverse of under root 1 minus theta square by the response of a second order underground system subjected to unit step in here. So in this response if you observe this is the steady state value 1 and this is the nature of response or transient state e power minus at sin b. So underground response is reaching the steady state of 1 in the form of e power minus at sin b. This is the steady state value of the one. There will always be a tolerance band about the steady state value of it. Now this tolerance band is usually 2 to 5 percent. 2 percent means 0.98. 5% means 0.95. So if the response reaches and settles within the limits of this tolerance band, then we say the response has reached its final value. If you observe the response is having an exponential term and a sine term. This is the exponential part of the response. This is the exponential part or exponential term. We are taking exponential envelopes because we have a sine term in between. So, in between these exponential terms, this is the sine term. This is the response. So, if you observe, eventually the sign is getting ramped. The response is reaching and settling at the final value of the What is causing this sine term to get damped to the final value? Exponential term. Remove this exponential term, it is continuous self. This exponential term, if you observe, cannot become zero. Exponential term will always reach a finite value. What finite value it is reaching? One. Sign term only eventually will become zero. So this exponential term is given by this expression. Because it is reaching 1 as you observe. Now this is comparable with e power minus t by t. That is why we write the time constant as 1 by theta omega n. The sign is getting damped because of this exponential envelopes. This exponential term is a function of g 
that which is causing the sign term to get actually damped. Who is actually damping the sign? The exponential term is actually damping. This exponential term is a function of d term. That is why this d term we call it as actual damping. In this response, we define the specification as time taken by the response to reach 50% of the final value is called as delay time. 100% of the final value is called as ice time. This is the maximum value of the output measured from the steady state value with the maximum peak. The corresponding time is called as peak time. Wherever this exponential term touches 0.98 or 0.95, the sign also will enter the 0.98 or 95 tolerance band. So wherever the sign term is reaching and settling within the limits of tolerance band, that time we call it as settling time. Now these are the performance specifications of this system. Four specifications with respect to time, one specification with respect to magnitude of the response. In these performance specifications, the first one is delay time. This delay time expression is empirical. There is no proof and is given by 1 plus 0.7 zeta by omega. Second one is rise time. If you look at the specifications, what is rise time? Time taken by the response to reach 100% of the final value. This is rise time, which means at T equal to TR, C of T value is 1. Therefore, C of T at T equal to TR will become, this will become 1 minus G tau omega and TR by under root 1 minus theta square sine of omega d tr plus theta value is 1. e power minus theta omega and tr by under root 1 minus theta square sine of omega d tr plus theta value is 0. In this expression, exponential term cannot become 0. You see, exponential term will always reach a finite value. But what term is becoming zero? That means sign only will become zero. Since sign of omega d tr plus theta only is becoming zero, this implies omega d tr plus theta value is phi. So tr will become phi minus theta by omega d. This is the expression to calculate rise time. Next we have third one is peak time. If you look at this uh, response, what is this peak time? It is the time taken by the response of the system to reach the maximum value. So to find this maximum value at t equal to tp, c of t is having maximum value. So to find this tp, to differentiate this response and equate it to zero. So let us do that. d by dt of e power minus zeta omega and t by root of 1 minus zeta square sine of omega dt plus theta equate this to zero. So differentiate it to the response and we are equating it to Zero. This will become zero minus of e power minus zeta omega and t by root one minus zeta square 
cos of omega dt plus theta into omega d plus sin of omega dt plus theta into e power minus zeta omega nt by root 1 minus zeta square into minus zeta omega n. This is equated to 0. Minus of this minus will become plus. So this expression becomes e power minus zeta omega n t by root 1 minus zeta square cos of omega dt plus theta into omega d is equal to sin of omega dt plus theta into e power minus zeta omega nt by root 1 minus zeta square into zeta omega n. This term will get cancelled. Sin of omega dt plus theta by cos of omega dt plus theta. Sin by cos is equal to omega d by theta omega n which is omega n into root 1 minus zeta square by zeta omega n which is root 1 minus zeta square by zeta. So if you look at this expression, this is tan of omega dt plus theta is equal to tan theta because under root 1 minus zeta square by zeta is nothing but tan theta. This expression we compare with the general solution of tan. What is the general solution of tan? Tan of n pi plus theta is equal to tan theta. We compare with this general solution. In this comparison, omega dt is nothing but what? Tan theta. Since, since t is tp, omega d tp is equal to n pi, tp will become n pi by omega d. This is the expression to calculate peak time. Now what does this n signify? Because you have calculated for first p, n signifies Because this will become e power minus 4 over 
only when you put st is equal to 4 by g tau omega n. Similarly, for 5 percent tolerance band, it will become 3 t, 3 by g tau omega n. Put 3 by g tau omega n here, this will become e power minus 3. 1 minus e power minus 3 will give you 0.95. So the expression for settling time means 4 by g tau omega n and 3 by g tau omega n. If not specified, you should always calculate for 2 percent. Or specified name, so settling time calculate karo as a question hai. So you should always calculate for 2 percent. Similarly, the fifth one means maximum peak overshoot MP. So first to calculate this maximum peak overshoot in the response put T equal to TP T equal to pi by omega D. So put this expression first in the response of the system. This will become uh, 1 minus e power minus g tau omega n into pi by omega d by under root of 1 minus g tau square into sin of omega d into pi by omega d plus theta. This omega d, omega d will get cancelled. What is sin pi plus theta? Uh, minus sin theta. Sin pi plus theta is minus sin theta. Minus of this minus will become plus. The sin theta root 1 minus theta square will get cancelled. Because root 1 minus theta square is sin theta. This expression reduces to 1 plus e power minus g tau omega n into pi by omega n into root 1 minus g tau square. So omega n, omega n will get cancelled. This reduces to 1 plus e power minus g pi by root 1 minus g tau square. If you observe, this expression is nothing but from here to here, this whole thing. But we want from here to here because we are defining MP from steady state value. Therefore, MP value is nothing but C of T at T equal to TP minus 1. So therefore, MP value is E power minus g pi by root 1 minus g the square. This is the formula for calculating the maximum equal. This formula can also be generalized. We generalize this as e power g ta n pi by under root 1 minus g the square. Which means if you put different values of n, if you put n1 you are finding maximum. If you put different values of it, you can find second peak, third peak, first under shoot, anything you can find. By simply putting different values of n, expression will remain same. Similarly, the sixth one is how many cycles this uh, response will complete before it settles within the limits of tolerance band. You see, from here to here it is rise time. The moment response has reached at this point, from this point you have to take the sign. Now say sign ko dekha. And from here to here, it is one cycle. Again from here to here, it is one cycle. As a, how many cycles it will complete before it reaches and settles within the limits of 
12 months back. If you want to calculate, we know that omega d is 2 by fd. Omega is 2 by f, which implies what is fd? Omega d by 2 by. What are the units of this cycles per second? Now, for 2% tolerance band, multiply the settling time into fd. What are the units of settling time? Seconds. What are the units of fd? So therefore, so second second will get cancelled. What remains is cycles. So this will become 4 fd by theta omega n cycles. Similarly, for 5% tolerance band, it is the settling time into fd, and this is nothing but 3 fd by theta omega n. This is the formula for calculating the number of cycles the damn sign will take before it reaches and settles within the limits of tolerance band. Seventh one is the time interval or time period. Time interval or time period of the damn sinusoid. So the time interval or time period of damped sinusoid is given by 1 by these are the performance specifications of this response. This is the characteristic equation of a control system given. And we are asked to calculate what are the values of theta and omega n. Yeah, omega n can huh? Point four. How did you come? How did you find the values of theta and omega? By so comparing with the standard second order characteristic equation. Suppose this is the characteristic equation given. Four s square six s plus twenty five equal to zero. Even this also will have theta and omega because theta omega characteristics are from second order onwards. So even higher order systems also will be having this zeta omega and characteristics. Now, can we compare with the standard second order expression? Huh? So now let us learn how to find zeta and omega and for higher order systems. Go, next survey. Time response analysis for <laughs> Time response analysis for higher order systems. Time response analysis for higher order systems. Consider, consider a third order characteristic equation. Consider a third order characteristic equation SQ plus PS square QS plus K equal to zero. So it is obvious that we cannot compare this to the standard second order expression. The procedure for finding theta and omega n of any higher order system, the procedure is, first you have to find what are the roots of this polynomial. So the roots of this polynomial are s plus p1 into s square plus q1 s plus k1 equal to 0. These are the roots we have got. Now for finding the roots of this polynomial, Plot these poles in S plane. Say for this third order system, these are the roots we have got. This pole is lying somewhere here. This can be real and equal, real and unequal, or this can be complex coordinates. So I am assuming them to be complex coordinates and assume that these poles are occurring somewhere here. So for this third order system, these are the roots. 
and these roots are lying in this way. This is how they are lying. Suppose we have two systems. One system whose pole is nearer to imaginary axis. We are calling this as system one. Another system whose pole is far away from imaginary axis. We are calling this as system two. If you look at the response characteristics of the system, the response characteristics of the system is of the form of e power minus a1 t. The response characteristics of this system will also be of the form of e power minus a2 t. So as you observe, the nature of response of both these systems is same. But what is the difference you are observing? Huh? Time. This is taking t1 amount of time to reach the final value. This is taking only t2 amount of time. Our observation is p2 is very much less than p1. Now, if these two systems are given to us and we are asked to evaluate the time response of these two systems, we are asked to evaluate the time response of these two systems, which one will you prefer? Where you those systems there, or time response analysis can I? So, which one will you prefer? one will you prefer, first one or second one? You have to do time response analysis. What is time response analysis? Analysis on time taken by the response of the system in reaching the steady state value of the input, whatever may be the input. That analysis you are asked to do. So which one will you prefer? Huh? If you prefer second one, if you prefer second one, if time will be there, you will give input, you are getting output. This is almost exhibiting zero order characteristics. So, what time response is? But for the first case, the response is taking some time which can be analyzed. Yes, sir. How much time it takes to reach 75 percent, 50 percent, 25 percent? This analysis you can do. That is time is there. Hey, the time response analysis can't be done. Those poles which are nearer to imaginary axis, which have, which contribute to time response analysis of a system, which have a dominant effect. As far as time response analysis is concerned, such poles are called as dominant poles. So those poles which are nearer to imaginary axis or which are nearer to origin, their contribution to time response will always be dominant. Those poles which lie far away in the left hand side of his plane, their contribution to time response will become insignificant. It becomes insignificant. And such poles are called as insignificant poles. Insignificant ka matlab kya? Useless. Insignificant ka matlab kya? Useless. That means what is the effect of this pole on the time response of this third order system? Huh? Insignificant. Insignificant is not the effect of this time response. That means the effect of this pole is discarded and this third order system is approximated to second order system with respect to dominant poles. That is why those poles or zeros which are nearer to imaginary axis or origin they call them as dominant poles or dominant zeros. There is a thumb rule. So whatever zeta and omega and you calculate for this approximated second order system is valid even for third order system. Whatever time domain specifications like rise time, peak time, settling time you calculate for the second order system, they are valid even for third order system. 
हैबिट क्या है हाँ इनसिग्निफिकेंट इनसिग्निफिकेंट का मतलब क्या यूजलेस तो यूज ही नहीं उसको रखो या निकाल दो सिस्टम पे कोई फर्क ही नहीं पड़ता तो टू आइडेंटिफाई दिस इनसिग्निफिकेंट पोल देयर इज वन टम रूल टम रूल का मतलब इफ यू हैव नेम टू द टम रूल इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दिस पॉइंट एंड दिस पॉइंट दिस डिस्टेंस शुड बी मिनिमम ऑफ 5 टू 10 टाइम्स मिनिमम क्राइटेरिया इज 5 व्हिच मींस अगर ये रियल पार्ट माइनस 1 है तो ये ये कहां पे रहना माइनस फाइव है माइनस फाइव है मिनिमम फाइव है देन इसका जो इफेक्ट है इस कंसीडर्ड एस इनसिग्निफिकेंट यू कैन डिस्कार्ड दिस पोल्स एंड यू कैन अप्रोक्सिमेट हाईर ऑर्डर सिस्टम एनालिसिस तू सेकंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम एनालिसिस नोटिस ना नाउ टू कैलकुलेट जी टाइम ओमेगा टू कैलकुलेट and omega n are we having standard second order expression only are we having standard second order characteristic equation only or is there any other equation using which comparing which we can calculate the values of g and omega ha ya french mein bolo ओमेगा कैलकुलेट करने के लिए या सिर्फ सेकंड ऑर्डर कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन ही है या कुछ और भी इक्वेशन है जो हम कंपेयर करके जीटा और ओमेगा में तो दूसरा कोई और इक्वेशन है हा? क्या इक्वेशन है स्क्वायर प्लस टू जीटा ओमेगा एन एस प्लस ओमेगा एन सिर्फ यही है या कुछ और भी ऐसा एक इक्वेशन है आर यू श्योर है तो बोलो मैं नोट कर दू इसका मतलब इसका मतलब कोई भी हाइर ऑर्डर सिस्टम हो ये डॉमिनेंट रीजन में कितने पोल्स रहना चाहिए सिर्फ दो नॉट मोर देन टू नॉट लेस देन टू अगर ये फोर्थ ऑर्डर सिस्टम है अब ये रीजन में कितने पोल्स रहना दो सिर्फ दो रिमेनिंग टू Compulsively lie in. Then only it is possible to calculate the values of theta and omega. Because only second order expression is there. Compare and calculate. You understand? So to calculate theta omega, it is necessary that two and only two poles must lie in common. Remaining all the poles must lie in. Is this clear? सपोज ये रियल एंड अन इक्वल है तो सारे पोल्स रियल एक्सिस पे होंगे ये लास्ट पोल इज यूजुअली डिस्कार्ड अगर ये डिस्टेंस देखना है यू शुड सी फ्रॉम फर्स्ट पोल एंड लास्ट पोल अंडरस्टूड सपोज ऑल द थ्री पोल्स आर इन डोमिनेंट रीजन ओनली इज यू ऐसा भी कोई कंडीशन आ सारे पोल्स जो है डोमिनेंट रीजन नहीं है इन सच केसेस यू कैन ओनली फाइंड द रिस्पांस जैसा इसके रूट्स आ गए हमारे माइनस ए माइनस बी माइनस ये तीनों रूट्स हमारे सारे डॉमिनेंट रीजन में ही है तो इनसिग्निफिकेंट तो तो एक क्राइटेरिया इट इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड इन सच केसेस यू कैन नॉट फाइंड जीटा एंड ओमेगा एन यू कैन ओनली फाइंड द रिस्पांस व्हाट इज द रिस्पांस k1 बाय s प्लस a k2 बाय s प्लस b k3 बाय s व्हाट एवर इनपुट इज देयर द इनपुट वी अप्लाई एंड अप्लाई लैपलेस इनवर्स एंड राइट द आंसर Only response you can find, but not values of theta and omega. Is this clear? So first we draw these two figures. Don't write this question. You only draw this figure. There are some points we have to write. Time response analysis of higher order system. The time response analysis of Higher order system is obtained is obtained by approximating to is 
obtained by approximating to second order system approximating to second order system with respect to dominant poles with respect to dominant poles second point the time domain specifications the time domain specifications Time domain specifications obtained for obtained for approximated second order system are valid for are valid for original higher order system also. valid for higher order system also because because the poles lying far away because the poles lying far away in the LHS of his plan LHS Poles lying far away in the LHS of his plane have insignificant effect. Have insignificant effect. On the time response characteristics. Have insignificant effect on the time response characteristics. Now, if you look at this question, you have to obtain what is the second order of approximation. So, is this a transfer function given or is this a characteristic equation given? Transfer function. A characteristic equation is a transfer function. Characteristic equation. When a transfer function is given, you cannot simply remove insignificant poles. Just like that, you can't remove from a transfer function. No doubt, if you look at this poles, this is insignificant pole. Maybe it's the real part minus 0.5, more than 5 times away. So you can't simply remove S plus 5 and write the answer as 10 by S square plus S plus 1. You need a dominant pole. Whenever you are approximating a higher order transfer function to a lower order transfer function, you must first convert the transfer function in time constant form. What is the time constant form? It will be 2 by 1 plus s by 5 and 1 plus s plus s square. This is the time constant form of the higher order system. After converting in time constant form, then you eliminate the insignificant pole. 2 by s square plus s plus 1. And then this remaining transfer function will become approximated transfer function. Why we should convert in time constant form? Because, suppose if I write the answer as 10 by s square plus s plus 1. Okay, lower order system over here. Here, lower order system, if I convert in time constant form, you have to take out one comma. Yes or no? You have to take out one comma. Now, here, lower order system, the time constant form kya hai? 10 by s square plus s plus 1 hai. Yes or no? Higher order system ka time constant form kya hai? 2 by a hai. Kya hai? The original system ka. Yaha pe constant term kitna hai? Yaha pe constant term kitna hai? Ye mismatch nahi rana. You understand? Kyunki constant term affects the steady state value. Ye do equivalent hai. Ye do equivalent hai. Kyunki 
nature of response will not get affected. Only the steady state will get affected. But when you say approximation, when you are approximating higher order to lower order, when the steady state will be same. When the steady state will be same. When we are equivalent, we are approximating higher order system analysis to second order system analysis. Not only response, steady state भी वहाँ पे same. Is this clear? इसलिए whenever you approximate the higher order transfer function to lower order, what you should do? First convert in time constant form, and then you eliminate the insignificant.
x cube plus x square plus 30 base plus k equal to 0. This is the characteristic equation. What order? Analysis of a higher order system is done by approximating to second order system ds plus c equal to 0. So he is saying in the question, this characteristic equation is having a pair of complex loops with the real part of minus 1. जब हम इसको फैक्टराइज कर रहे हैं तो ये हमारे रूट्स हैं। इसका मतलब ये जो रूट्स हैं ये क्या रूट्स हैं? कॉम्प्लेक्स रूट्स हैं। और ये कॉम्प्लेक्स रूट्स का जो रियल पार्ट है वो कितना है? माइनस वन है। इसके रूट्स कहाँ पे हैं? माइनस बी प्लस और माइनस रूट ऑफ बी स्क्वायर माइनस फोर ए सी बाई minus 1, this is the condition given, which implies what is B value, 2. So, S plus A into S square plus 2S plus C equal to 0. It is S cube, 2S square CS plus A square, 2AS plus AC equal to 0. Simplified as S cube S square into 2 plus A plus S into C plus 2A plus AC equal to 0. Call this as 2 and call this as 1. 1 and 2 are they same or are they different? Because these are the roots of first equation. So which means 2 plus A value is 6. C plus 2A value is 13 and K is nothing but AC. From this the value of A is 4. From this the value of C is 5. Which implies the value of K will become 4 plus 5. 4 into 5 is equal to 20. So when the value of K is 20, then this characteristic equation will have a pair of complex roots real part of minus 
solving this problem, you have to find the value of B such that all the roots of this uh, system convert in a point on real axis. So let us first construct the characteristic equation of this problem. Let us first construct the characteristic equation of this problem is 1 plus g of s equal to 0, 1 plus k into s plus b by s square into s plus 20, s cube plus 20 s square plus k s plus b k equal to 0. So if you look at the question, he is saying you have to find the value of B such that all the roots are converging at a point on real axis, which means when you factorize this polynomial, all the three roots will be lying at the same value. They are converging at a same point. This roots are S plus A whole cube. The root side is S plus A whole. Multiply and open the brackets of this. It is S cube, S square into 3A, S into 3A square plus A cube equal to 0. This is 1, this is 2. So 3A value is 20, 3A square value is A. And a cube value is B. So from this you have to find the value of B. So what is B value? A cube is equal to what is K value? B into 3A square. So K square cube gets cancelled. And what is A value? Since A value is 20 by 3. 20 by 3 is equal to 3. That means B value will become 20 by the answer. So B is the answer. So unity feedback system is to be designed to meet the following specifications. The specifications are Value of MP lower side is 
less than 30 percent means it cannot be more than 30 percent. Cut off value in the higher side will be 30. So, per percentage MP equal to 15 percent means MP value is 0.15. E power minus G pi by root 1 minus zeta square is 0.15. Calculate zeta value comes out to be 0.55. We know that theta is cos inverse of zeta, cos inverse of 0.55. From this you get the value of theta as 57. Similarly, the cutoff value of MP from the higher side percentage MP is 30%. MP value is 0.3. E power minus g pi by root 1 minus zeta square value is 0.3. Calculate zeta, it comes out to be 0.35. And theta is cos inverse of 0.35. Theta is 70. So, from the specifications given, MP should be greater than 15 ka mandar. It cannot be less than 15. So, what the cutoff value is? Less than 30 percent ka mantra, it cannot be more than 30. It's the limit value, cutoff value kita. So by taking those limiting values, we have calculated zeta. Similarly, settling time jo hai less than 0.75 run. It's the mantra, it cannot be more than 0.75. And it's the limiting value kita hai? 0.75. So settling time is 0.75. What is settling time? Other specified nahi hai to super sakte hai lena kabhi bhi. Zeta omega and value is 4 by 0.75. Now, for zeta equal to 0.55, we got the angle as 57. Mark the time. is 57. Then we have got the angle as 7. Mark the angle first. Okay. We will plot the dominant root afterwards. So this is part A of the question we are solving. If you look at part B of the question, you see zeta omega value is 4 by 0.75. Zeta omega and value is how much? Which means this distance is 4 by zeta omega, 4 by 0.75. This point hai, this point will be how much? Minus 4 by 0.75. Ye distance kitna hai? 4 by 0.75. So ye point jo hai, real point, it will be minus 4 by 0.75. This minus 4 by 0.75 value. To extend this value till it touches these angle lines. It is touching here and here it is touching here. The question is, you have to mark the area in this plane where the dominant roots of the system characteristic equation must lie. This is the question that we will mark afterwards. If you look at the third, second part, determine the smallest value of the third root determine the smallest value of the third root such that the dominance of such that the dominance of complex conjugate roots of part A remains unaltered remains unaltered so this is these are the angles 57 degrees and 70 degrees. What is the real point? Minus 4 by 0.75. This real part is touching these two angle lines at these points. Third root should lie at a minimum distance of 5 degrees. SC equal to 5 into minus 4 by 
2 into 0.35 into 15 s plus 225 equal to 0. This characteristic equation is. And then the root is what is marked. This is insignificant pole and this is dominant pole. Multiply and open the brackets. S cube plus 36.5 square plus 498 s plus 5850. This is the characteristic equation of the system. To find the open loop transfer function, whatever function you have before the constant term, take that out common. So 1 plus 5850 by s cube plus 36.5 square plus 498 s equal to 0. Now let's compare karo 1 plus g of s. So the open loop transfer function is nothing but 5850 by s into 36.5 s plus 490. So ye hoga open loop transfer function.